TikTok, and we're talking now with the director of the Fiscal and Budget Policy Project at the R Street Institute, Jonathan Bidlack, is with us this evening. Jonathan, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. I'd like uh, your thoughts about uh, uh, the threat that is posed uh, uh, by TikTok, which sounds uh, like potentially uh, uh, a fairly uh, serious uh, subject. Uh, I'm not sure what it has developed into in practice. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I heard your remarks at the top of the hour about how you had never used the app before, and uh, I have to confess that I actually have used the app. It was uh, actually one of my favorite apps. Uh, you know, it's a, it was kind of like what the Internet used to be, people posting all sorts of uh, fun videos and just very lighthearted. And my wife actually brought, uh, brought it to my attention, some of the privacy concerns and other things that uh, you and your previous guests talked about. And I think those are all very legitimate. It's very clear that... Uh, the data that's being collected by TikTok would be troublesome for an American company, and, and I think, you know, rightfully so. It's, it's seen as troublesome uh, for a Chinese-owned company. Um, now, the, of course, the big question that it, this all comes down to is, you know, what is the proper course of action? And I think there are a lot of different courses of action, uh, perhaps beyond uh, beyond banning, but. Uh, um, but, you know, it, it, there's no doubt that it, it's something that we should be dealing with. Mm -hmm. Then let's talk a bit about the notion of, let's say, a Microsoft buying TikTok. And for the Chinese, I guess, uh, as uh, our previous guest, uh, Dr. Layton, noted, it probably makes sense. You, you, you get at least some of your cash back or you get nothing. So uh, it, it probably would uh, be a, a cut your losses kind of, uh, of best available option. Now, would the acquisition of TikTok by Microsoft, 100 percent or as uh, president trump discussed 30 percent that is to say less than, than than a majority would that answer these questions uh, certainly uh you 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 have concerns about what the chinese government brings in we'll get to to what somebody else might use with that data for for the moment in a moment but but right now just uh, if microsoft were to supplant the chinese as the people calling the shots would that answer many of these objections well, I, I, it certainly answers some. I mean, you know, one of the one of the major problems with uh, TikTok as it operates now is that you know whenever there's a violation of privacy or uh, data sharing that is inappropriate, there isn't really any recourse for anyone to do anything about that, right? The um, the you know the Chinese Communist Party doesn't exactly respect property rights. They don't exactly go and uh, you know bow to social pressure. Whereas in the United States, if you have a United States owned company, I mean, we've seen Facebook, we've seen Twitter. Uh, use our data in ways that we maybe don't want them to. And they've had to respond to public pressure. They've had to respond to, you know, sort of the threat of lawsuits, for example. Um, that's much harder to do when you're talking about a Chinese-owned company. And so I do think that uh, the Microsoft solution is is actually appealing for that, for that reason. And obviously, from Microsoft's end, they clearly see uh, potential benefit for, from them financially to, to uh, taking an ownership stake in, in TikTok. Yeah. Now, Will it solve everything? I don't know, because we know we have these same problems as well that have existed with Facebook and Twitter that we've talked about. And so um, I think at the very least, though, it creates a pathway to resolve any problems that might occur. I don't uh, understand the business plan that's, uh, that's involved here, but my assumption would be that these social media sites gather in a lot of revenue from advertisers who are interested primarily in demographic breakouts of just who goes to a given website and that uh, presumably the commercial viability of a website would be reduced I don't think it would dis be destroyed but it would be reduced if uh, this information was not uh, made available uh, but I don't know the the exact amount to what extent is a service and, and let's face it these things are services TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, or what have you uh, to what extent would it no longer be a, a viable commercial entity if, in fact, they couldn't uh, dig out uh, this information about people who use it? Well, I think it's a question of what exact information is appropriate. There's a big difference between collecting things like, you know, basic demographic data, for example, versus some of the things that, that you know, people who have reverse engineered TikTok have found, things like being able to get access to things that you're copying and pasting on your phone when you're not using the app. Uh, or getting access to everything that's you know related to your network, your IP address, and your router's MAC uh, MAC address, and, and this kind of information. And so, um, I, I think I think it, it's possible to have some sort of middle ground there, whereby you know, look, that that information is still able to be grabbed, right? We all know that when we use Facebook and we use Twitter and other social networking sites, there's information that's being uh, gathered about us. 
but the the there's nowhere near the amount of information that that TikTok is currently gathering or has the potential to gather, and of course, even more importantly, has the potential to turn over to nefarious third party governments. And so, yeah. you know, I think again, I'm not I'm not in the position of Microsoft to kind of know what you know, their exact value is, but there's no doubt the app is super popular. Um, I think there have been a lot of apps that have been successfully monetized where it wasn't necessarily obvious from the get-go uh, what the best path forward was from a profitability standpoint. And, you know, I think I think that decision ultimately gets left up to Microsoft to, uh, to take the risk and roll the dice and see whether or not they would be able to make it profitable should they decide to acquire it. Yeah. Now, we've been doing this now for a few years, long enough, I would assume, to have a reasonable handle on just uh, what does make a website profitable, and coupling that, and that is to say the, the value of the service involved, in other words, you know, you're not going to have this service unless uh, X amount of information is uh, made available, you you weigh the benefits, the pros and the cons, okay, we got uh, the, the service on the one hand, on the other hand, we have this information. Have we reached a point in your view, Jonathan Bidlack, that we should be able, and by we I mean uh, the government as regulators, to say, okay, all right, we've we've weighed what's on the table here, and we have drawn the line here. We think that anything beyond that line is information you shouldn't be passing out. Are we at a point of of making a uh, a reasonable line of demarcation, if you will, on what sort of information and how much information is uh, in fact uh, used? You know, I, I'm I'm not sure. I, I think that, uh, frankly, I I like that line to ultimately be drawn by consumers and and the companies that are putting out these sort of platforms and and apps that sort of decide that for themselves in the context of the marketplace. I mean, there's all sorts of apps that you might download from the app store on your phone that you give differing levels of information to, and some of that may be necessary, some of it may not be necessary, and. You know, consumers perhaps don't pay as close attention as, as they should to that, and that's that's an issue. But I think that, you know, the by and large, that's, that's more the job, as I see it, um, for those consumers to decide for themselves and for the companies to sort of have that give and take with their with their client base. I mean, I mean, look, at, in the early days of Facebook, we found out that Facebook was collecting far more information. They were doing things like perhaps, you know, activating microphones when you didn't know that your phone microphone was on. And there was an outcry from consumers and that that issue was fixed and it was not something that, that they're doing, at least in theory anymore. And so, you know, I think that that's the kind of give and take that I would be more comfortable seeing rather than, you know, having having government bureaucrats try to go and hammer out and say this is exactly where we where we think the line should yeah. be. I want to come back and talk about that and take some calls for you as well, uh, Jonathan Bidlack uh, from uh, the R Street Institute, on the notion of uh, the marketplace determining this. One eight six six five zero Jimbo is our number. One eight six six five zero five four six two six. President Trump feels that there are national security implications to the banning of TikTok. Microsoft has stepped forward and said, "Well, you know, we could buy it or a big chunk of it." And the president saying, "That's interesting." That was the phrase that he used in uh, that uh, soundbite that we played earlier. Uh, but that uh, the government, the U.S. government, should uh, get a cut of the the transaction. One eight six six five zero Jimbo, and we'll be back with more in just a moment.